honestly, after four weeks of MK Ultra, I needed a little more therapy, if you know what I'm saying. So I am so happy to say that 2021 starts off with Talkspace as a sponsor to our podcast. So if you're feeling overwhelmed right now, then you're just being human. There's a whole lot to be anxious about with the 24-7 news cycle, the constant pandemic news, politics, even though the, <laughs> the election is over, still completely causing chaos, and now the added layer of the holidays. We need to take care of our mental health and work through our emotions with a licensed therapist. And with Talkspace, you can sign up online or download the app and start therapy the same day with a licensed therapist for a fraction of the price of traditional therapy. Depending on the plan you choose, you can message and schedule live video sessions with your therapist, and you'll pay the same amount every month, so it's just easy to budget. And now Talkspace covers 40 million people for online therapy through their insurance or employer. So find out if you're eligible right now at Talkspace.com slash insurance. As a listener of this podcast, you get $100 off your first month with Talkspace. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com or download the Talkspace app. Make sure you use the code CHILL to get 100 bucks off your first month and show your support for the show. That's code CHILL, C-H-I-L-L, at Talkspace.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Chaluminati Podcast, episode 85 now? 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. Thank hey, you, man, Alex. It's so, whatever you want it to be. It is. Until we get to like 90 and 100, not a huge Doesn't deal. Doesn't matter. No. 100? Doesn't matter? What are we going to do for the 100th episode? What is that going to be? We're going to do... It depends on who's in control of the 100th episode. We're going to do episode. mushrooms and just let it ride. <laughs> I don't... Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. Oh yeah, <laughs> we're gonna so turn. Either. We're gonna we're gonna open our eyes during episode 100. We're gonna be meth. <laughs> so it's gonna be. I'm gonna see myself deconstructed before <laughs> my own eyes. You're gonna you're gonna solve yourself and then you're gonna disappear. <laughs> I was I'm meth kid, kidnapped by air hypnosis, of course. <laughs> uh, this is opening up like chaos because this is an Alex episode today, everybody, and I'm so excited to hand the reins off to Alex and today. I'm so excited to talk about patreoncom slash oh, no. pod. No, we have to stop. We have to preface this by something even more pro important oh. to show first. Oh my! Okay. We, have, we only have four days left when this video goes up to get that Chupacabra T-shirt before it's gone forever. Oh man! So go get it while you can. On the fifteenth of January, it is gone forever. Scoop it up. Scoop it. Go. Scoop that shirt. Slurp up it. that shirt. Get that okay, shirt. Alex, you can go. Suck the butt off of that shirt. All right. No. Uh, no. Guys, come to Chuminati <laughs> Pod uh, on Patreon, where no. not only do we get to uh, continue making the show every week for you, uh, we also get uh, you know to have a researcher in Deanna who is like literally the unsung hero of the show. Like, I mean, not even unsung at this point. Like. MK Ultra would not exist without you guys coming and supporting us on Patreon. So if you like stuff like that and you like getting 15 minutes more of Chiluminati every week right after this, we just recorded right after we talk about all the stuff you text us, tweet us about all the stuff where you're like, have you heard about this? That's where we talk about it is on the mini. So so please head over to Chiluminati pod on Patreon, patreon.com slash Chiluminati pod, and you can become part of the Chiluminati. Join the Chiluminati. Become a Chiluminati. Yeah. You can be no, in No, that's just all the listeners, actually. When Everybody's are we going to do on. like a, a live show again? What's going on with this world? <laughs> What's going I don't on, know, man? Did you get, did you get, it? I, I think if you go to Haven't Florida, you heard? it's first come first serve to vaccine. I'm just saying like, come on, come on, planet Earth, get your shit together. Haven't you heard? What's there's going been on? A, there's been a virus, Jesse. Why can't we do uh, like an LA live show? Let's make I, this happen. I would love right? it. I would love to do that. Right. Once hey, one in five life. people who take a COVID test don't have it, I think we'll be back. Uh, in All the, I'm in saying the, uh, is we <laughs> wait until like the summer and then we invite people out for a show. And just to be sure, we get giant backpacks full of sanitizer and we spray down the crowd. That right? sounds like that sounds like me in March of 2020. Being it's like, like a yeah, Gallagher by show. Summer, probably yeah. by summer. We'll yeah, just spray we people down and we'll just yeah. be like, come to the show. 
and it'll be fine. <laughs> There's nothing people who are fans of conspiracy podcasts like more than being sprayed with strange chemicals. <laughs> they love it. They will, <laughs> don't worry, it's good for you. It's uh, as we mind, spray them it's on mind uh, protecting chemicals. Like you can't be <laughs> tricked if you have them on you. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> the other kind of virus, you know what I mean? Mind virus. <laughs> the mind virus. <laughs> Uh, Gotta get those mind viruses under control before they do damage. That's that's real, guys. Let's be real. Um, okay, are you want you guys ready to get into this? I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know, know what's, what's happening young. today. I don't know Look, what's going either. on. For four no weeks, told me. for four weeks, we have been awkwardly laughing at illegal government activity <laughs> and abuses of power uh, that have just been dominating this show. But I finally decided to turn off CNN and listen to our podcast instead. Uh, and in the MK Ultra episode, uh, which also happened after everything, one of the main things that was crazy about it that stuck with me was just this image of the bacteria test that you were talking about you know the uh like idea that like the, the, oh the people going in and like spray testing like, like the low pentagon key just like like dusting san yeah. fran with like bacteria oh, yeah and then it Probably. like started to like collect on like buildings and people were starting to get sick stuff like yeah, that one person died because they had a bladder surgery and then they started peeing red and it yeah, just killed them it really it really fucked me up like it was like a really weird thing to think about and it was just like this imagery that was like in my brain and it was like Silent Hill vibes or Mario the movie where there's like the king is like the mushrooms that are everywhere. Uh, That's or where the, you went mentally or like it's like the Mario movie where <laughs> Koopa is a man. And yeah. at the end. Well, but the king he evolves the king, into right? a dinosaur and the a king is all the up. mushrooms. He, I mean, he did. The king he is every that. mushroom, right? Isn't that what guess, happens? You've been working with Alex for how many years and you're surprised? That's I can't, where, that's where I can't his remember. I'm always surprised when anyone brings up the Mario movie. <laughs> I can't remember <laughs> if it's the Mario movie or if it's the War of the Worlds Tom Cruise that has like I all the crap everywhere. I know this is off topic, but I would have given so much to have pre, pre-filming and post-filming drinks with Bob Hoskins and just to hear Oh my God. He probably would have hit you. He probably would have hit you. That movie. He probably would have beat the shit out of you just to make himself feel better. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, I used that concept as the jumping off point for like what was inspiring me for my next mystery. I was trying to like, I had two goals, right? I had that in, in one, on the one hand. And the other goal that I had was that I wanted to find something that was just like a little lighter in tone, <laughs> something that we can just like talk about instead of like not wanting to hear more about it, uh, <laughs> less upsetting. Uh, and after diving through a bunch of posts on Reddit, uh, old internet articles, YouTube video or two, uh, I ended up with a two parter uh, that I ended Ooh. up stringing together out of this. Uh, and it is so much more nuts. And it goes so many like completely unexpected places. I, I don't even know like what you're going to like call this. Like, I don't know what you're like when okay. people like go and see Chilmanati episode 84 and it has a title. I don't know what it's going to be. I'm sure you'll. You've done episodes where I have had to go Alex Internet Mysteries. Yeah. Like just sure. That's fine. <laughs> How about this one? That's what you should call this one. How about okay, this? Yeah, about- How about this shit? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we got Jesse's histories missing. Alex's. How, how about, about this? this how shit? about this bullshit? All right. Uh, but you know what? Don't worry because I think not only is Jesse going to be happy because there's a lot of science and like facts <laughs> with this one, uh, but also uh, Mathis is going to be happy uh, because he has specific interests that he needs to be catered to. And I think between the, what does I think that we're mean? Gonna, can you just like, what yeah. does that mean? Like, we're, in a perfect, we're in a perfect Venn diagram. Okay. Like we Jesse have like science and math is like, why not? I don't want to spoil it exactly, but we'll get, we'll get, we'll get into it. We're, I don't know if he's going to say, cause if he says it, he immediately loses you, Jesse. It's my fear. <laughs> That's what I'm waiting for. I'm so, like, yeah, yeah, it's very sciencey. So aliens, I'm like, Oh boy, here we go. Almost, um, almost everyone in this is an expert or a scientist or like a military person. So that's good. Uh, I also want to shout out uh, to Reddit user Lucy Cat Writes. I want to shout out to YouTuber Lazy Masquerade uh, and like a million Spanish, French and Portuguese journalists that like I don't even know. I like I don't even know. I, I don't speak those languages. I had to like take people's words for a lot of the translation uh, but I'm going to post links. I have the I have the links for you guys for later when you guys are inevitably going to start looking up this stuff. Uh, but if you speak Portuguese or you speak Spanish or you speak French very well and also speak English very well, you don't have to speak English that well. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good uh, at figuring out what people are trying to say. Uh, but like 
if you have if you notice any inconsistencies between what I am reporting and what is in the actual articles, please let me know. Uh, but I tried my best to be really accurate. So that's that's where I'm at. Uh, it was just a, it was just a little bit of a barrier because this mystery, I don't think, is one that comes out in in the English speaking world too much for this reason. You know what I mean? Just because it wasn't like world news headlines. Uh, and so it just sort of stayed in Portugal. You know, I think that's where, okay. or at least in Europe, let's say. Um, but anyway, let's go to Portugal uh, now, uh, where we're going to meet a man called Toma Jorge de Conceição Silva. Uh, and uh, today, uh, I don't know if he's dead or not, actually, because I, again, he does not have a Wikipedia article in English, just in Portuguese. Uh, but he's a, as far as I can tell, he's a retired four-star general in the Portuguese Air Force right now. He's very old, like 90 years old or something like that. Uh, but at the time uh, of when this went down on November 2nd, 1959, he was just a pilot at the Sintra Air Base uh, in Portugal, which was located near Lisbon, a big city in Portugal, uh, on the coast. OK, so the ingredients you're putting into this little soup are everything I like to hear. We got four star Air, uh, Air Force pilots. We got Mysteri- the 50s. Yeah. Very important it's a time. Good time. Yeah, it's a good time, yeah. man. So far, so good. So he's going through pre-flight uh, with a couple other pilots on the runway. He's literally ready to go. He's in like he is in his cockpit, like ready to go to turning on his plane uh, when all of a sudden they have to like stop everything and get back out because they start to notice this like weird like buildup on their canopy like this weird like stuff is like getting on the plane and they're like what the fuck is that so they like all get out and they're like what is this it's like on them it's like this weird white shit and it's building up on their hair and it's building up on their uniforms uh and even weirder as they're seeing it it's falling from the sky in like little threads like white filament threads that are just like f- like l- softly falling from the sky and they're just like would you, would you describe it kind of spider webby like yes actually like? yes okay. because a lot of the a lot of the stuff that i looked up uh when talking about this comes uh is, is spiders and sp- i'll explain that in a second uh yeah, but yeah. apparently the whole strangeness of it lasted only about 30 minutes but that's like a pretty long time if you consider yeah, like a while what it was uh but it was enough of a problem it took them like they had to stop and like hose off all their shit uh and it was uh unsettling enough uh that uh silva the pilot finally decided that he had to call up his father uh who just happened to be another he's like a prominent portuguese like astronomer like sort of intellectual person he's also in the navy as professor his name's eugenio uh correa de conceso silva and he he's a professor who taught for the portuguese navy um so he calls him and he's like what the fuck like let me tell you about this shit uh and so right away after hearing about this his father is like okay well it's probably those flying spiders right uh yeah i, I don't know if you know about that's where my mind immediately yeah, i don't know if you know about these if you're listening to the show but one of the things that certain spiders do is they just sort of like sit there and like shoot out little wisps that are like so light that they just kind of like get caught in the air current and like the static electricity and the air sort of just like takes them away you know activates takes them away and uh in like a, like overnight you can wake up and you know, there'll be like a field that's just like covered in spider webs. It's like crazy. Kind of gross looking. Yeah. A lot of the spiders die. Like I would say one in five uh, things that are like invertebrate invertebrates flying through the air are spiders, uh, which is crazy to think about. Uh, but a lot of spiders die. But typically you find spiders around um, and that's called ballooning uh, when spiders do that. Uh, that's like that's like the official name of it. Uh, and in, well, thank you for that so, science tidbit. Alan. Yeah, appara- apparently it's something that happens a lot in Australia. Uh, like, I guess they just have like hella spiders over there. Uh, I've never seen it yeah, in person. I hope I never will see it. Uh, but it's also yeah, not I'm thinking real- like this is all great, but I, I would never like to see this. Yeah, I would never <laughs> want to like walk out into a forest and realize I was in like web world. Uh, but uh, it's also really not a thing in that part of Portugal, right? Uh, and this and his son didn't see any spiders anywhere. There was no like evidence of anything like attached to the string. It was just really this white sort of crap. Uh, and it was like literally enough of it at some places like normally, you know, you, you can imagine if you've ever seen a bush covered in spider webs like that's what those spiders yeah. leave. 
But this was like there was so much falling that like on the ground, it was like clumping up like how snow clumps up. Like there was a lot of it. Uh, And so he decided to get a second opinion. uh, His father did uh, from a biologist friend of his, uh, a professor called uh, Antonio Joaquim Guedes do Amaral. Uh, who was the headmaster of the commercial and industrial school of Evora, Portugal, uh, which is another town about 60 miles away. Right. Uh, But the fucked up thing was uh, this guy, Amaral, already knew all about this shit because apparently the same exact fucking thing was happening where he was at the same time. Uh, And he saw even more shit. Uh, Because apparently earlier that morning, he was sitting at his desk in his office, minding his own business, doing boring professor shit. I don't know, like shuffling the same stack of papers for two hours. I don't know what they do. Uh, But when he (laughs) started hearing like people outside, like making commotion and like screaming with excitement, like really like, oh, my God. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the fuck? Right. And he starts coming out to see what it is. He runs into some students who take him outside to show him the, quote, strange airplane that was flying over the town. Uh, And sure enough, when he got to the street, uh, there was a small bluish gray elliptical object up in the sky, uh, looked to be about the size of a passenger plane. And it was flying like in a very strange pattern, very erratically. And uh, at first he thought it was probably, you know, he's a sensible guy. He's like a biologist, right? Uh, He thought it was probably just an illusion that was like being caused by something in the atmosphere because it really wasn't flying in a way that looked like any sort of man-made device could fly. It was very much like speeding up and slowing down against the laws of physics, kind of like that that craft in that to the stars footage. Right. If you can imagine. Uh, But then he decided, you know what, actually, he went back up to his office to his telescope and like sighted it in the window and like looked through it and what he saw like blew his mind. Uh, it was a real object. It wasn't a, wasn't a reflection cause he was able to track it in his telescope. Uh, upon looking at it closer, it seemed to be like seamless, uh, no wings, no windows, uh, no visible method of propulsion. Uh, and its flight pattern was literally like, I just, like I said, they like, it would go really fast, like faster than anything you ever see fly. Then it would like stop. Yep. dead ass in the air and then fly away. Um, and as he was doing this, even more amazingly, a second one showed up a few minutes later. Uh, and uh, the only difference was this one was so quote colossal that it made the first passenger jet sized one seem tiny. Right. So now everybody in the town of Avora, Portugal is looking at this thing. Uh, it's huge. And there's a little one flying around now with it. The first one was like the scout almost or something. Yeah. And for like 30 minutes, this thing flies around the town, the small one orbiting the large one as they both move in a, quote, jellyfish like pattern. Remember that sometimes decreasing right. significantly in altitude. Uh, So that they couldn't really tell exactly how big it was. You know what I mean? They're just guessing that like the small one was about the size of a passenger plane. The other one, they can just say it was much bigger because (laughs) it kept coming closer and moving farther away. And they just sort of lost their sense of it in that way. Mm. Uh, And then suddenly they both just like like Superman taking off, like just go. You know what I mean? Like just like one second they're there and the next second they like jump to light speed kind of deal. Like gone. Right. Uh, and that's when in Evora, the white threads started falling. Right. Uh, so again, everyone's first thought was these spiders ballooning, right? Yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, it's like, sounds like ectoplasm or something. So well, yeah, you're telling me this is when a spaceship jumps into hyperspace. This is like, this is like in the new star Trek movies, you know, when they're like, whoop speed and it goes, pew, and it shoots off. And there's like little sparkles left behind. You're yeah. telling me <laughs> that the silk is the sparkles are left behind when this stuff jumps into warp speed. Well, honestly, I would say that that would be like a great, great like theory. And some people do think that it has something to do with that. Like when like in today, like some people, when they talk about this, they say maybe it's like some sort of like residue from space travel. Right. Uh, but or dimension shifting, which is where my mind went. Yeah. But oh check boy. this out. Oh right? boy. <laughs> nobody, nobody saw any spiders again. Right. So that was the first thing. Like you would think there were hundreds of people in the street. You'd think, oh, they'd be like, oh, there's like spiders everywhere. It's like a spider thing. But it wasn't. 
uh, and it was clumping just like it did at the airbase. And so fucking Professor Amaral, the genius, did again something that no one, almost no one ever does in this situation, which is he was already in his lab. He grabbed a fucking Petri dish from his lab and ran outside yeah. and caught some of that shit in the fucking Petri dish. Just like this, like held it out like ah, 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 ah. <laughs> and he caught some fucking some fucking alien threads. Alien jizz. Uh, and uh, this isn't a, you know, one time occurrence. People you know looking at this now you can look back and you can google this stuff uh because people call it angel hair uh and there's a very good reason for interesting. that interesting uh mm, i love when, angel hair and, pasta and so he finally he went in he, he had a he had a 120x microscope in his lab uh because again this is like 1959 so like you know that's pretty good uh he had Listen, a, we we're, we've nuked people a decade ago we've got some science chops oh he, this is just like his personal microscope 120x uh, and he got it onto a slide and it reveals what seems to be a tiny organism with a unicellular core. And when he pushed it between the slides, like put a little pressure on it, 10 slightly darker tentacles covered in clear yellowish slime emerged from the core and expanded and moved around and it reacted to stimuli. And unbelievably, it seemed like it was alive, right? Right. So he, you know, doesn't go crazy yet. He packs this shit up because he's the headmaster of a fucking college. He's a biologist. He sends it to the University of Biological Sciences in Lisbon, uh, who were very skeptical at first. Uh, you know, when he was like, OK, there was a spaceship and this shit like fell and I caught it and here it is. Right. So they were like, OK, whatever. And they started looking at it and they're like, uh, what the fuck? Because they they have like the real daddy microscopes over there, right? Like so they can mm. get some much better data. And there are pictures of all of this, by the way. Uh, they're not amazing because they're from an old newspaper. Uh, but you can absolutely find these. I will link them. They're hard to find because they're not in English and it's PDFs of microfiche. So it's a hard thing to share even with you guys, but I will share it. I have it. Um, and uh these things had, according to them, who could view it in proper lighting conditions and, and stuff like that, the uh, central little core is yellow in color, uh, and the tentacles were bright red uh, when, when, when looked at properly. And they discovered that under stress, they exhibited, quote, intense defensive reactions akin to an animal. Because apparently they were just too fast and too intelligent for any plant life that we know on Earth. Even like even like the ones that like eat shit are like nothing compared to how fast the shit was reacting. Uh, you know, like what is that thing called? The Venus flytrap? Like, oh, even yeah, faster yeah. than that. Uh, and apparently this life form that they had, uh, it was so strong that at one point it actually tried to it actually pushed the slide apart a little bit and like disrupted the viewing because it was so active. It like actually was able to lift the two slides apart. Um and uh, similar, like along those lines, they also found that the central core could withstand about 350 grams of pressure uh, before just like they would suddenly would like turn dark brown and like die. Gotcha. Right. Uh, assuming it was alive in the first place. Right. Right. Um, and uh, here it, from a, here's a quote about that from the final report. And I just would love it, Mathis, if you would just read this. Sure. Quote for me there. Tentacles are formed of parallel filaments joined together by a gelatinous substance. Each filament or strand is transparent, showing corp corpuscles inside of it, whose number increases over time. These filament projects, uh, these filaments project strongly on the glass sheet, drawing on it a perfectly defined contact line where certain seem to emerge in organized formations. In the middle of the central body, there is a mouth-shaped opening around which there are very fine lines, corresponding perhaps to existing folds or fissures in the substance that composes it. One can also see dark and round spots that draw a pentagonal shape that becomes increasingly regular. Yeah, so this is real science by real observational biologists really writing about something that they really had on hand in their lab, right? Uh, and here, and here's a few more things uh, from other experts that they pulled in uh, from specific areas of study to like look at this uh, and talk about it. Uh, these are like pull quotes from the Reddit write-up that I was looking at. 
Uh, there's an expert biologist professor called Santos that said, quote, the only animals I can think of that could resemble this being are the coalenterata, which are like tiny little like coral jellyfish, tiny boys. Uh, but I confess that my bot, but that my knowledge of biology is insufficient to classify this particular organism. Uh, basically, like. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Like, I'm a biologist expert. I couldn't tell you. Uh, another leading biologist, a guy named Professor Godinho, said, all I can tell from looking at it is that it's some form of being. But I cannot tell you what it is because it is unlike anything I've seen before. Uh, they also, just to make sure that it wasn't a plant, brought in the Professor Emeritus of Botanics and the General Director of the National Institute of Botanics, uh, uh, somebody named Dr. Resende, who puts that to bed and says, the sample you send me is of an animal, and thus we consider it outside our field of expertise. So they're like, it's not a plant. Uh, and finally, a it's all very interesting. Yeah, another prominent scientist uh, on the condition of anonymity. Uh, Because he realized the gravity of what he was saying. But it was a scientist of repute uh, in this report who said, quote, it can it can be admitted that such beings could come from the Earth's extra atmospheric space or from a neighboring planet. Uh, A couple other theories that were floated around include uh, deep sea debris, which somehow could like get on a weather balloon. I don't really understand how that's possible. I guess like if it launches from the ocean, like maybe somehow it could like take it up and condense and like drop it over the sky. I, I really don't quite understand the theory. Uh, another gotcha. theory is like some MK <clears throat> Ultra style shit. This is where my inspiration. This is how I found this. Uh, yeah. is like some type of Cold War military experiment. Like it's probably not Portugal's military, but like, you know, could be. Any of the other dickish world powers out there that love to (laughs) exert their will over unwilling strangers. Um, But unfortunately, uh, none of these hypotheses hypotheses ever really got to be investigated because of the way that Portugal was at the time in the 60s, Uh, uh, because apparently nationalism and like strict old school religious values were like in at the time. Yeah. And uh, when he tried to translate uh, his findings to share uh, with other countries, scientists in other countries, Professor Amaral was literally threatened uh, with suspension and or worse. Uh, and while, like I say, there are a few articles in Spanish and French and Portuguese, this one never really made it to that legendary status, even though it has some of the best evidence ever, ever recorded about something like this. Like it is like, that's, that's what I kept thinking of years. I'm like, how have we never heard? How have I never heard of this he literally, little incident? He literally it, got pressure from the it, government, got laughed off it. And like it checks all those boxes of, of, of weird extraterrestrial, like the seamless metals, no wings, like, uh, you know, something bigger in a scout ty- type ship leaving a hot behind debris. Yeah, like, it's that language. It's bar- that you know, I, it's, like, it's that language barrier. Mm-hmm. It just stops you sometimes like you just can't, yeah. especially because it's Portuguese, which is like not a widely spoken language compared to say Spanish. It's, I mean, it's a, it's one of the top ones, but like compared to how many people, people speak English or, you know, or how many people speak Spanish or Chinese, you know, it's, it's not, it's not one of the main, main ones. So it's hard to spread it. Uh, and it's from the sixties, uh, but there's also more to that. So uh, by the time Amaral died in the nineties, uh, like I said, he kind of became, people would like bust into his office and like be like aliens, like all the time. <laughs> Uh, oh, and to God. the point to the point that he would not even talk about it in public. This is the thing I want to make clear. These are pe- I know there are people out there who think aliens are going to make them famous, especially nowadays. But people who have had alien like things come up, it's ruined their lives more often than not. Yeah, Nobody's Almost ever like, always. it's true. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ne- never does anybody come out and be like, I'm now a millionaire and I have the legions of fans. It's like I got laughed out of my job or I got oh. my family like disowned me. Like except in some, except in some few key cases, uh, you know, few minor key cases. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so he literally decided I'm not going to talk about this in public ever again. No more angel hair, uh, just in the interest of his academic reputation. But he did keep all his research and he has tons of eyewitness accounts of people in town, hundreds of them. And he has a list of other events around the world that are similar uh, to the one that he experienced. However, Unfortunately, in 1978, there was a fire at the University of Lisbon on March 18th, 
Uh, and I got just because that sounds like bullshit. I looked up a quote from the October 1978 issue of the Science Magazine, Science. Uh, and the, it said, quote, destroyed the central building, which housed the National Museum of Natural History, the Geophysical Institute and nine research centers. Extensive losses were sustained to both laboratory equipment and publications, as well as to museum collections. So it was a real Ugh. just utter academic disaster. And, you know, I, it, it's so it, it so much stuff was lost that it's like ridiculous to think that in the context of this story that. You know, somebody burnt the library to get rid of the samples. But, you know, it really did happen. You know, so, you know, right. that stuff does happen. Those sci fi movie tropes sometimes are real. Uh, and as a result, like I said, all original samples were lost. There is some rumor of one sample from 1960 that just went somewhere that's like not been accounted for. But in all likelihood, it is also probably gone. Uh, but in 1980, two years later, all the research. Uh, that the professor did, as well as pictures of the creature were re-examined by an expert cell biologist and professor emeritus at the University of Lisbon uh, called Professor Azevedo. OK, OK. Uh, and so that was in 1980 that he did that. And then in 2008, just 12 years ago, even though he's retired now, he decided at this point to like take those notes out for when he did that. And like go back and revisit it with like modern science and like see what he did, because he actually after he retired, he decided to dedicate the rest of his life to studying unknown cellular structures and like uncovering the unknown in cellular biology. So this was like right up his alley. So in 2008, he did this. And here's a quote for you to read, Jesse. Before you read that quote, Jesse, I just want to take a moment to enjoy the fact that I'm able to just relax for a minute. And enjoy an episode about alien jizz and not human torture by the United States government. Because really, that topic just made me more stressed out. You experience stress or anxiety or chronic pain or have trouble sleeping at least once a week, you're not alone. Especially right, especially right now in what is the beginning of 2021. So many of us do. I personally have openly spoke many times about my anxiety and depression and how that keeps me up at night and prevents me from getting a full night's sleep. And I'm always looking for new things to try and help ease myself into sleep and alleviate those anxieties. And that's when I discovered Feels. Feels is a premium CBD delivered directly to your doorstep. It naturally helps reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. And for me, helped keep my mind from going so crazy and loud every single night. It allowed me to close my eyes and focus on the more enjoyable things before slipping into an enjoyable, relaxed slumber. Place a few drops of feels under your tongue and feel the difference within minutes. The thing to remember about CBD is that finding your right dose is important and everybody's dose is different. So leave room to experiment over the course of a week or so. You may need to take more or less time depending on if you're familiar with the effects of CBD. And if you're new to CBD, Feels actually offers a free CBD hotline to help guide your personal experience. Feels works naturally to help you feel better. There's no high hangover or any addiction or anything like that. Join the Feels community to get Feels delivered to your door every month. You'll save money on every order and you can pause or cancel at any time. Feels has me feeling my best every day and it can help you too. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash chill and you'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. That's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash chill to become a member and get 50% off automatically taken off your first order with free shipping. Again, that's feels.com slash chill. From what I can tell from the photos I was sent and that I am now re-examining many decades later, this structure or microorganism, as some call it, is still unknown to contemporary science. It is made up of a body with ten arms, and its appearance vaguely resembles a starfish. The photos do not show any type of cellular organization. I was unable to identify a singular structure akin to an earthly single cell organism. Almost 50 years later, I reread the reports, including my own report, and I restate what I wrote back then. This could have been an organism. However, the samples were not prepared correctly by Amaro back in 1959, which makes it impossible for me to make an educated guess. Yeah. Kind of crazy, right? <clears throat> what do you mean it was like improperly? 
It just like Pear wasn't done in like laboratory condition. Like he just fucking took it outside and caught. The oh, because he went outside and scooped yeah, it out yeah, of yeah. the sky. All right. Now I want to get. So I was like. I've been down the rabbit hole of you been talking where I was like, there has to be a photo of this, right? There has to there, be. There's plenty of photos. There's I, tons. Just, this is like, if you want to include this, Mathis. Sure. That is a medium article uh, yep. about this entire situation. And if you scroll down enough, it has newspaper clippings yeah. and a photo of what I just described. Yeah. I mean, the, like, dude, there's, there's a the lot. Tentacly bits coming off uh -huh. the end. It's wild looking. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. That is wild looking, dude. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is quite remarkable. Uh, right. Um, now there are still other experts out there who've looked at this. Right. And while they obviously haven't been able to come to like a consensus, right. In general, the idea of them being linked to jellyfish is the most common, like linking element of all these people's studies, right? Uh, though ideas about how they came to be in the sky span everything from evaporating baby jellyfish off the surface of the ocean into the, like the weather system, which I guess huh. could happen. I don't know why that would happen. Like not during rain that they would just like cascade down to earth. Uh, and then these like when you, and then like they eventually just dissolve. Yeah. 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 Just like a spider. This is, web this is low key. If anyone watched the Watchmen series on yes. HBO. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's just like that. It's crazy. Yes. Uh, That's such a good show. Everybody should go dude, watch that, that show. The first episode of that is like you get a fucking yeah. message sent to you from that. Yes, um, you do. Okay. Another, another way, uh, another, like any, like I said, some so, people think but, that it comes I'm, off the surface. Sorry, let me, let me tangent yeah, here yeah, for yeah. a minute because a lot of more alien things I just want to talk about. So the more I've been obviously the more I read about aliens, do my own research, the more I'm curious if they're actually more if if they're real interdimensional and potentially even terrestrial. So I'm curious because you keep saying jellyfish. I wonder if it falls into the theory that if these were extraterrestrial in some sort, they're not from space. They're from our ocean because there's a lot of theories and the ones that I personally, I think, probably put a little bit more weight to. I mean, we talked about that thing. What was that weird science object that geologists used that just got ripped out and just disappeared? Like that we talked about in a Minnesota while ago. Yeah. Do, do you remember that? The it was like a science studying seismic thing. And it just, just it looked like if something ripped the wires. Yeah, and everything. yeah, 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 yeah. It looked like a beast. But either way, it. like I would I would put it that this probably fits more that these things maybe come from the ocean. Yeah. Or if you imagine like a super light creature, like a super like very mm. like air based creature that is maybe like one big sort of algae cloud like a like imagine oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. you look at all the clouds and there's like one cloud in there that you don't know but it's like a living organism and this is Doesn't how it explain it, the ships though and this is how it like reproduce i don't know about the ships i don't know what to tell you about the ships i mean <laughs> I, may not be I know connected what i'm gonna at tell all, you about truthfully. the ships huh they may not be connected they at all. It, it yeah. just could be circumstance. Happenstance. I, I, mean, I mean, I'll I'll connect the ships a little more if you'd like. <laughs> uh, OK, <laughs> but that's literally like the two big ones are the evaporation out of the ocean or like yep. maybe it's the reproductive cycle of some like angler fish type creature, but of the sky, like some creature that lives below a depth that we ever will visit easily. It's just something that's like so high up in the atmosphere that we just don't have a good way of like being up there long enough to see it in any meaningful way and notice it. Right. Um, but that that's where the Portuguese angel hair phenomenon of 1959 uh, ends. But that's not where our story ends at all, because now it's time to take a look at other angel hair sightings around the world uh, at a glance. Uh, thanks to an article from Atlas Obscura by Na Naomi Russo and um, a nice write up on science.howstuffworks.com. All right. So uh, on April 14th, 1561, the year of our Lord, you may have seen this rather <laughs> famous broadsheet article. You know what a broadsheet is? It's like a pamphlet that you might ha hand out like a hear ye style news pamphlet gotcha. that r commemorates something crazy that happened. Um, it's like a zine <laughs> kind of, but it's, no, but okay, it's from gotcha. 1561. Um, it's a 1561 as zine. Yeah. 
it has this amazing picture. Like if you are an, a UFO or like ancient aliens watcher, you've probably seen this picture. Uh, but apparently after a large black triangle object appeared in the sky and seemingly <laughs> crashed outside of city limits, which is literally mentioned in this fucking broadsheet, witnesses saw hundreds of bizarre shapes moving erratically through the air above them near dawn. Uh, now, I have a quote. I have literally the text, some of the text of the broadsheet here for you, Mathis, if you oh, would boy. mind reading this for the people. I'll do my best. <clears throat> In the morning of April 14th, 1561, at daybreak between 4 and 5 a.m., a dreadful apparition occurred on the sun. And then this was seen in Nuremberg in the city before the gates and in the country by many men and women. At first there appeared to be, wait, at first there appeared, oops, uh oh. You, oh, sorry, it's split it into two. There. No, no, you're fine, you're fine. I just gotta scroll back yeah. up, hang on. At first there appeared in the middle of the sun two blood red semicircular arcs, just like the moon in its last quarter. And in the sun above and below on both sides, the color was blood. There stood a round ball of partly dull, partly black ferrous color. Likewise, there stood on both sides and as a Taurus about the sun, such blood red ones and other balls in large number, about three in a line and four in a square, also some alone. In between these globes, there were visible a few blood red crosses between which there were blood red <laughs> strips becoming thicker to the rear and in the front malleable like the rods of reed grass, which were intermingled among them two big rods, one on the right and the other on the left. And within the small and big rods, there were all, there were three, also four and more globes. People wrote real stupid back then. Don't worry. Four and more. Uh, these also started to fight among themselves so that the globes, which were first in the sun, flew out to the ones standing on both sides thereafter. The globes standing outside the sun and in the small and large rods flew into the sun. Besides, the globes flew back and forth among themselves and fought vehemently with each other for over an hour and when the conflict in and again out of the sun was most intense they became fatigued to to such an extent that they all as above wait that they all as said above fell from the sun down upon the earth as if they all burned and they then wasted away on the earth with immense smoke after all this the, after all this there was something like a black spear very long and thick sighted the shaft pointed to the east the pointed the pointed the point pointed west. God damn. <laughs> Whatever each sign means, God alone knows. Yeah. So this is another classic. And and during this also uh, was angel hair raining down on people uh, around the same time as, monster, as when everything probably. just like sort of withered and became smoke or whatever. And, yeah. and this is not a unique type of broadsheet. There are many, many, many stories like this, and a lot of them are in Nuremberg for some reason. Uh, but I, I wanted to have you read this just because I wanted you to track the like sun discussion, the many objects discussion, uh, and, and the fact that this is connected to angel hair, right? Uh, and apparently mm -hmm. this event, along with 224 other like historical events between 679 AD and 2001 all ended with angel hair falling from the sky. And of those 225 uh, events, 57% are linked to a mass UFO sighting at the beginning of it. Like not just like one guy's story, but like this appeared over this city, right? Like something that's right. like really something probably happened, right? Uh, also in 1477, white cotton-like material fell from the sky in Japan for six straight hours after a luminous object crossed the sky. Uh, also in Japan, 300 years later in 1702, at high noon, the sun turned blood red and strange white cotton hair fell to the ground. Uh, mm. Another major sighting uh, occurred October 17th, 1950, 1952, in the sky over Oleron, France, when Jean-Yves Prigent, a high school superintendent, along with hundreds of other witnesses, noticed, noticed that, quote, a narrow cylinder apparently inclined at a 45 degree angle was slowly moving in a straight line towards the southwest with a sort of plume of white smoke escaping from its upper end uh, and created a, quote, cottony cloud of strange shape. Uh, a little in front of this, uh, when viewed closely through binoculars or opera glasses, which are apparently something 
people in France still had in the 50s. Uh, people also reported that there were 30 bright red spheres surrounded by yellow rings. Uh, and here's another quote uh, from Prujant. Uh, Jesse, if you want to read this little short boy right here for me, send that to you right now. Bang. The saucers moved in pairs following a broken path characterized in general by rapid and short zigzags. When two saucers drew away from one another, a whitish streak like an electric arc was produced between them. Uh Uh-huh. And then right after that is when the angel hair started falling. It rained down on everything. Mm. It wrapped itself around stuff like tree branches and telephone wires as it fell hanging from them. And apparently when people picked it up and rolled it into a ball, first it became like gelatinous and then eventually it just melted into nothing. Uh, There was even one dude who was on a bridge uh, and he said that while he was watching, he was like on this bridge and the stuff around him that was falling got so thick that he literally had to cut himself away from it. Like Damn. like a fucking alien. Why movie. can't this happen to me? I know, right? I mean, uh, that's but, my look. That's my number one question, just to begin with. Like, why did this stop in the fifties? I don't think it has, and I I, I have either. some pretty good evidence for that. Uh, why haven't? Why aren't there modern versions of it? We're like, look at are. this. I took photos of it. You're only like, you're only a part, on you're phone? only partially through the episode. I promise it's there. All uh, right, I'm, uh, I'm excited. I'll, Give me my alien. Gym. Also, this dude who cut himself out of this shit. He says that after he cut it off of himself, it flew back up into the sky. Uh, that's a weird one. Uh, <laughs> also, I should say about that French uh, event. That 10 days later, 140 miles away in Gaillac, Guy, France. Gaillac? Gaillac? Perfect. I, I don't, Honestly, I'm sorry. I can't even tell that you're not French. Uh, France, almost exactly the same thing happened. Again, according to witnesses, a cigar-shaped leviathan was seen wreathed in wisps of white clouds for 10 minutes above the town, surrounded by 16 saucers before the angel hair started to fall. This time... It's amazing how... How regular the ship shapes stay over the course of centuries. I know, right? Uh, This time, the event was also observed. That seems like it's it's priming people to. Well, I mean, we'll talk about the similarities then. We'll talk about the similarities. This time, the event was also observed by scientists at the Breves Sharon Sock Meteorological Station. They only caught 30 seconds of the cloud cigar doing its thing because it took them a minute to get everything going. Uh, But they also uh, caught a silvery metallic disc crossing the sky towards the southeast at the exact same time. Uh, So that's like 2021, baby. Aliens are coming this year. That's another happening. That's That's another weird part of it. Stop getting yourself hyped for a thing that will not occur. It's happening. I no, can. it's just not. Mm. It's not going to. They're calling me, brother. All right, and now no we're, one's calling you. No, oh, one. they're calling you. They call. See, Alex knows. Oh, they're calling you. I don't know if they are. <laughs> I don't know if they're calling specifically you, but they're calling people. That's for sure. Uh, not this podcast. <laughs> they're not calling us. I want them no. to. I'd wish they'd call me up on my my Discord. Call me up, aliens. <laughs> call me on Discord. <laughs> Alex, it's hey, me. What's up? Can you share your screen? I want to watch you play <laughs> fucking league. Um. <laughs> Okay, I'm huge into Fortnite. <laughs> so <laughs> the thing that I've been holding off on talking about, and this is like where we get into like, this is where it gets, we, the, the, the story changes a little bit at this point. Uh, uh-huh. Okay. Perhaps, all right. perhaps the most notorious sighting of all of these uh, happened also in Portugal. Not too far from Evora and Lisbon in a place called Fatima. Uh, and if you're Catholic... You might know where I'm headed with this during the miracle of the sun, which is a certified Catholic miracle uh, from 1917. Um, maybe you don't know about this if you're not Catholic or Portuguese, uh, but here is the basic gist of what went down. Uh, and when examined outside the context of Christianity, it's a fairly bizarre yet insanely well-documented thing that went down because this is, it's only 1917, but it's like, it's like, you know, the modern world. So, you know, it, it got to that. 1917 ain't that long ago. Yeah. So basically a little over a hundred years ago is not long. Yeah. So basically these three shepherd children, Lucia, Francisco and Jacinta in the Cova de Iria area of Fatima started to report sightings of a beautiful angel woman, possibly the Virgin Mary, eventually definitely identified as some version of the Virgin Mary who wore a white mantle edged with gold as she is always depicted. Uh, She was holding a rosary and who they described as quote, 
brighter than the sun, shedding rays of light clearer and stronger than a crystal goblet filled with the most sparkling water and pierced by the burning rays of the sun. Uh... They started hell of a description. Beautiful, beautiful writers. These children. They started coming back <laughs> with specific prophecies uh, from this woman, uh, saying about saying the rosary over and over again every day to achieve world peace and to end the world war, which had just broken out uh, around that time. It was 1917, just like the movie. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it told them to come back on June 13th, um, which is the feast of Saint Anthony. Uh, and by now, the people in the town sort of knew about this as like a weird thing that was happening. They weren't taking it too serious, right? Because like, it's just some fucking kids, right? Um, yeah. But the parish priest, Father Ferreira, uh, said to let them go, go check it out. You know, he's like, you know, what, what does it hurt for them to go see it? I want to know what happens. They came back with stories about a vision of hell. Uh, they said that the woman told them three secrets uh, that were, quote, good for some and bad for others. Uh, And the message that Francisco and Jacinta would go to heaven soon. They died the next year in the 1918 Spanish flu epidemic and that Lucia would live to spread the message. Uh, Lucia was also asked to learn to read so she could be better at spreading the message. She went into a life career of like being that person. Like, I think she became even like part of the church and went. And in 2017, uh, the kids were canonized. Um, or at least the, the the process began in 2017 with uh, the most recent pope doing that stuff. Uh, hmm. But by August 13th, the next time they were meant to visit the lady, uh, you know, the story had gotten so big that now there were thousands of people in Fatima, thousands. And Artur Santos, who's the provin- uh, the provincial administrator, he literally had to step in and throw the kids into jail before they got to their meeting because he didn't want to create like a scene, something dangerous or scary in some way. Uh, so he brought them in there and he was like, listen, you guys got to tell me what the fuck you said, what the fuck <laughs> they said uh, to you. Like, what are these secrets? And Lucia's mother was like, maybe if you capture them, you can get them to con- admit that they're lying. Right. Right. Um, <clears throat> but it it came and gone, right? The uh, the 13th meeting, come and gone because they're in jail. Uh, and because they missed it, apparently the Virgin Mary appeared to the kids like nearby six days later when they were all together, told them to come again to the original meeting place on October 13th when she would reveal her identity and, perver- and perform a miracle, quote, so that all may believe. Okay? So okay. eventually October 13th rolls around. There are somewhere, according to who you read, According to who you ask, there were between 30,000 and 100,000 people there now. So we're talking I mean, a bro, stadium. I would be there. I would be there. Yeah. If this story of this magic woman telling kids secrets and doom visions of hell, I want to see this person. Yeah, so th- I, we're talking about stadiums worth of people, right? This is like witnesses, right? Uh, and depending on which account you read, uh, no matter what, Nobody left disappointed. Hundreds of people have gone on record with formal testimony. But I think that this quote from a Lisbon newspaper uh, said it best. Uh, This one's for you, Mathis, to read. Okay. I'm going to just drop this right here for you. Tell me if it sounds Mm. familiar. Here we go. The silver sun enveloped in the same gauzy gray light was seen to to whirl and turn in the circle of broken clouds. The light turned a beautiful blue as if it had come through the stained glass windows of a cathedral and spread itself over the people who knelt at with outstretched hands. People wept and prayed with uncovered heads in the presence of a miracle they had awaited. The seconds seemed like hours, so vivid were they. And of course, as if you hadn't already guessed, on October 13th, yet again, specimens of white and somewhat, quote, flaky angel hair which was reported to have fallen in the aftermath of the miracle was collected and sent to lisbon for analysis where they determined uh, that it was natural rather than man-made and possibly more vegetable in structure than animal but again this was 40 years before the previous so you know you gotta allow for bad worse science at that time um you know so did they did she said she was gonna like a 
reveal who her identity? Does she be like, I'm Mother Mary, bitches? Yeah, this, I mean, look at look at Our Lady of Fatima. Like, look this up. Like, like yeah. the secrets have been the revealed. Lady, the yeah. secrets have all been revealed. They're they're like I got my high school Catholic education about that whole yeah. thing. So not the any other education about that whole thing. Yeah. Like even when I said I would want to see that thing, you know, my first thought was doubting Thomas. Yeah. No, <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, it's ingrained yeah. in me. You got man. that CCD, that catechism, yeah. that body of Christ. Uh, all right. <clears throat> so what the fuck am I talking about? What is this leading to? What is episode two even about? Right. Uh, Let's talk about some of the details again first. First of all, did you notice that the spaceships uh, were all red and yellow uh, in, in almost all of these, except for the very first one where it was like blue and gray, which is another color that they're mentioned here. But in all the different ones, you got these red and yellow spaceships in massive numbers, right? You got 30 here. You got 16 here. There was like a space battle in 1561, right? There's elements that are similar, that right? It's not... 100% the same, but there's elements that are similar. Similar movements in the air. Uh, you know, like everybody sees the spaceship do weird stuff. There's the 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 cylinder that shoots like a smoke out and that like the, the stuff falls, you know, um, something like that. Uh, maybe it's some kind of biological alien process, you know, who knows? Maybe, uh, you know, also like the triangle uh, with lights on it. That's like a very famous... There's the one in Phoenix that we saw in modern times. There's another one in uh, like me- like what we're in Mexico recently that was really popular. That was like another yep, triangle. Yeah, was a recent triangle. A lot of people think that, that Nuremberg uh, account was a space battle between different types of aliens, and maybe you know I don't know. Like there's sort of like other stuff at play, and there's certain parts that link together. I can't wait to see where this is going. I'm waiting. <laughs> I am. All smiles. I don't know what you're about to say, but I know it's going to be insane. My, pers- wait. I'm very my, personal, my personal conclusion about this is that maybe this points, and I'm not saying I believe this to be factually true, but if I'm trying to connect everything, I feel like we have the X-Files sort of grays, little green men sort of area of the alien world. We're definitely in, in with, with con- like nuts and bolts sightings of many different craft. Yeah, you're looking at something like that. I don't I just I feel like it touches like what I'm going to say is I feel like it touches the alien mythos of America a little bit. But I feel like it's like its own sort of like separate European mythos about aliens that we're kind of touching on here. Right. Like the thing about the the rain is very weird. The thing about I mean, the, the thing about the angel hair itself is really weird. The fact that it's like biological, you know, like the thing about a shitload of different craft in the air, like in plain sight is very strange. Not a thing that normally happens out here with like the typical like farmer in the woods sees an alien gets abducted type thing. Not any abductions happening here. You know, nothing like that. It just feels like there's this other element of this uh, and whether or not like how close it is to Christianity so often, like it's angel hair. You get the Virgin Mary creating angel hair. You get this like celestial event that's like related to God in some way. They're like, surely God, there's crucifixes flying through the air. There's a lot going on. Right. And it's all it's all sort of in the same sort of aesthetic wheelhouse. Right. Um, and so I looked into this. I was like, are there people who like conflate all this stuff are there like is there like a belief system that like connects this stuff together and what i found when i looked into this like blew my mind so much that's what gave this episode the second half and you will i believe me when i tell you you have no fucking idea where i'm going uh in france in the mid 1960s there was a pop singer called claude Cellier. Uh, oh, no, my he, God. I know where we're going. <laughs> Why are you doing this? Why are you doing <laughs> Alex? Uh, his Alex. last his last his real last name was Voilon. And he had a couple oh, of charting no. singles, uh, but he had to abruptly call it quits in the pop music oh. industry when his sponsor, the director of a national radio program named Lucien Maurice, committed suicide in 1970. He had he was like he had like one song that was like kind of chart topping. So he had a little money, right? And by 71, he settled down. He had two kids with a nurse uh named Marie Paul Christini. He started a publishing house and a sports car magazine called Auto Pop. Uh he wanted to become a race car driver. He got to test out the cars uh like for the magazine to like write them up so he'd like get to drive all these awesome race cars. 
Uh, Mm -hmm. But all that shit went out the window in 1973 when, according to him, uh, while he was hiking near the crater of the French Puy de la Solace volcano in France, Mm -hmm. an extraterrestrial craft gently descended from the sky. Mm -hmm. An alien came out who spoke French and who told. Can I ask what the alien looked like? uh, There's there's he 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 looked like he looked like a man. Uh, yeah, uh, blonde hair, white skin. Yeah, was he in, was he one of them? He was a, yeah, he's like a like a man. I'm not gonna say. I, I have I have a goof I want to say, but I'm not gonna say because it, it spoils what Alex is about to say. <laughs> well, but I'm just gonna <laughs> we'll get to the end. Well, we're almost there. We're almost there. Uh, it was like a man. Oh, it was like a human no. man yeah. come out. Yes, yeah, that's that's a very it's Nordic. He told Claude that he had come to meet with him specifically, and that he had a <laughs> message what would now become his mission to spread to the people of Earth. Okay. Before we continue, this is also really like this obscure alien knowledge. This is very common with Nordics in particular. Sometimes the beings of light that that have occasionally happened, but Nordics, for some reason, they pick people and they're always like, you are now on a mission to spread yes. our message. Yes, exactly. And here is their explanation for that. Apparently, this alien's name was Yahweh. And he came from a race of super advanced human scientists called the Elohim with technology 25,000 years beyond our own and who created all life on our planet through genetic manipulation. He said they'd been they'd sent 40 or so prophets before him, uh, but that humans always kind of fucked up the message because their brains were too primitive. Their societies were too simplistic. Uh, and that now God, was, this guy nailed and it. Now it was Claude's turn to do it right. Right. So using <laughs> mysteries and secrets from Yahweh, as well as new interpretations of earthly religious texts like the Holy Bible, his mission was to inform humanity of their true origins and to prepare us for the Elohim's return by building a residential embassy in a neutral territory, which I believe is basically the plot of the movie Jupiter Ascending so far. <laughs> I'm pretty sure like we're just right in the, the Jupiter Ascending area. I'll watch that movie in prep. Uh, but anyway, by 1974, Claude Vorlon had changed his name to just Rael, Rael, Rael. And after a couple appearances on French TV and radio, he started an organization based on his teachings called MADEC, which was an ac- acronym that translates in English to the movement for the welcoming of the Elohim creators of humanity, which eventually grew into the cult at the center of next week's episode the International Raelian Movement. Okay. Now we're going to talk a lot more about the specifics of this cult next episode, but I wanted to end today with a little quote from a book called Aliens Adored, Rael's UFO Religion by Susan J. Palmer. And this one's for Jesse. Let me know if this begins to... Can't believe you're making me read this. Sound for Can't believe you're making me read this. It's a fun topic for next week, I'm man. Not, I'm so upset. I'm so upset. <laughs> you have no... People, I'm going to let you know, do, do not research... Ray aliens. Don't even like look into it because you don't want Alex to spoil like for, I, I, I guess I, I can guess where this is going. I'm just going to like guess next episode. If you're listening, you're going to be like, well, well, this seems like actually kind of like sweet. Oh, that's so interesting. You know what? Wow. Good for them. Oh, they're so progressive. And the- Oh, oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> you're a cult. Oh, you mean every cult? Oh, you're a cult. Every cult? <laughs> oh, every cult. It's like, uh, uh, all right, where uh, is this So nonsense? I'm trying to send it to you. I had to like screen cap this off of like a book. So you got to bear with me here. Uh, I'm going to, I'm just going to email them to you. Just give me one second here. Just attaching them. <laughs> Never trust a man who claims to have gone off by himself to speak with Yahweh, God version or alien version. And claim that he is now their prophet and messenger. Dude, I, there uh, is, there is like, there are a lot of great articles out there, especially now that the whole Q thing is happening, right? Yep. But there's a lot of great articles about how anytime there's real information to disseminate to people, if it's truth, the disseminator says everything immediately. Right. Like everything they're saying, they'll yep. be like, I have to say this or who knows what can happen to me. And they immediately say it like actual whistleblowers, actual like truth people, like the people who actually are famous for whistleblowing, dump everything there is to dump. Right. People who are like, there's more to the story. 
and I will return to you in three weeks with more information. But right now, truth seekers, it's up to you to find out what the real path is. Right. Or like the alien came to me. And although there are many things I can tell you, I cannot tell you until I have more. Like what's the name of that Ricky Gervais movie? It's always BS. It's always BS. What's the the, uh, Ricky Gervais movie? Uh, what the hell is it called? I think it's called the invention of lying. Yeah. Um, The one where he like makes up religion. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's, that is, that is a good movie. Uh, I, I tried to email this to you. If you can't see it, I'll, I just I'll, got it. Yeah, I'll read it if you can't see it. But it's like the part uh, that's which like part of this am I reading? It's a it's a good section. The part that's like a photograph from a book. Uh, yes, yes, yes. But which paragraph? Just crush it. We'll get we'll be uh, through it sooner than you think. The whole thing, baby. Tell me if it sounds familiar. Uh, so start with the angel hair phenomenon is a rare phenomenon. Start yes. from wild Raelians. <laughs> you want to just, you want to just take it and run? I got it. If I got it right here, I don't I, see wow, wow, Raelians at all. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. I'll just, I'll just read it. Apple is just being dumb right now. While Raelians are quick to point to UFO sightings in the media as corroborating Rail's story, they dismiss the claims of career contactees as erroneous or crazy. When UFOs appear, the Elohim are making their presence known to manifest their support for Rail's mission. Although Raelians do communicate telepathically with the Elohim in their group rituals to feed their love, only Rael is permitted to receive messages or to rev- or to view the alien visitors. But many Raelians are CEII. That, that is, they don't speak to aliens, but they have witnessed and still witness UFO phenomenon of the second kind. Raelians, for example, periodically experience an unusual kind of close encounter of the second kind, CEII, right? The sighting of luminous flakes, also known as angel hair. Angel hair is a rare phenomenon associated with UFO sightings, and the most famous incident occurred in France in 1952. That's the one we talked about with the 30 uh, red and yellow flying saucers. People in the town all around were watching a cigar-shaped UFO when suddenly a plume of white smoke escaped from one end. The plumes left an abundant trail behind them, which slowly fell to the ground as if dispersed, reported a school principal. Uh, when witnesses tried to gather the material, it turned to gelatinous and disappeared, so it was never tested. Um, Jerome Clark notes that the reports of angel hair have been rare over the past three decades and mentions only, I've been asking. only three examples besides the famous French case. Yet angel hair is observed periodically at the Raelian summer seminars and interpreted as proof that the Elohim are watching over the uh, over the Raelians. Rael so, himself- sorry. Yeah, I'm just trying to like give. Uh, so this is 1998. So he's saying for the past three decades since the 70s. Yeah. There have only been three other hair sightings uh, that are not except. Yeah. Except for the Raelians. OK, they get jizzed on. Yeah. The Raelians the are seen. That is, that is more that is more accurate than, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Rail, Rail himself <laughs> describes the first sighting in his book. Let's welcome our fathers from space. Here we go. On October 7th, 1976, about 50 Raelians were at La Negrerie near Rock Plot in the Dordogne for the first anniversary commemorating the time when Rael had been taken to the planet of the Eternals. Suddenly someone cried, what is that falling from the sky? Great flakes were falling from a near cloudless sky. They seemed to be made of a cottony substance, which when touched, melted in a few seconds. Then someone shouted, look, there is something very shiny in the sky. Two luminous objects, Ooh. both very bright, were just above us. The fall of the flakes lasted about 10 minutes. Then the objects suddenly disappeared. The meaning of this event was that the Elohim were offering a sign so that Rail would not be the only witness to the Elohim's activities. End part I mean, one. I was gonna, yeah. I'll, uh, I can't yeah, wait. We, got, we can't. Go, we can't go any further until we go into them. You now you really so. don't know where this is headed. It's not I, about I, the I same will, thing. I will say that my one. I mean, obviously, I don't believe any of this. But more importantly, <laughs> <laughs> my big th- takeaway is at the beginning we were talking about silk and spider silk, and at the end we're talking about flakes. It's like unless you're just using different terminology. It does to, seem like it's two different things. What I. What I. What I was imagining based on the descriptions that i read is if you can imagine like that the fibers were a little bit more substantial than you would think like some like if you imagine like if you were like dry 
or you pulled out a hair from like your beard rather than your rather than your head like how it's a little heavier and then if you imagine them getting sort of matted together it's like flaky while still being fibrous like i, I, I don't i want to like, be clear that it never isn't fibrous it's just that the way that it falls and acts is very much more flaky than say like a spider web right gotcha i just there's there's a the biggest thing that i have is that like all these things it's never anything recent Right. It's never something that we can study. It's always like, well, it happened way back when, which to me doesn't mean it didn't happen. It just means that I don't know that I trust like it was aliens that did it. Right. I mean, even if you knows what was going on in the 50s, even if nobody ever asks you, right, like, was this aliens? Right. Even if you even if that's not the question here. Right. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's still great weird. question. They, still I mean, very, I looked at the weird. molecule. Like, yeah. I know like, what something was happened. on that slide. Like, what creature yeah. was that? Yeah. It was pushing Not the slide apart, bros. Pushing it apart. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what the aliens are about. But the the for part one, I'm left still curious. Yeah, yeah. If there were actually aliens before we went to the aliens, <laughs> that was the aliens actually, believe like, it was I'm aliens. Curious. And you there's know, just in a way we're all aliens if you listen to the aliens. <laughs> all right you know what you are correct there's there's a lot of um like every every instance seemed to have a some things that were the same but some things that were different mm-hmm. and and then including things like in the past like the fatima thing i think is a great example of everyone saw something i have no idea what they saw what but everyone fucking, saw a thing how could how could it, that, what, they caught up in religious fervor like i have no clue. how could that happen how could a hundred thousand people, how could 40,000 people, let's give it like a realistic number, 40, 50,000, if we're going on a range between 30 and a hundred, right? They were all there expecting to see something and then something happened. Like my what question in the is, world? just like as a skeptic, my question is, how long were they there before something like, were they there so yeah. long that just something happened because it happened and everyone was like, oh, that's it. I mean, like, they I, saw I'm the so sun curious. move, my dude. They watch the sun move. That's what I'm, but I'm like, what does that mean? I get, I really? get what you're saying. I get what you're saying, but I'm just saying like, these are not just like believers. This is like, people were like, oh, there's like a million people going to fucking Fatima. Let's send a news reporter. And he was like, oh, <laughs> like, I, I, you know, like it blew his mind. You know what I mean? Like, that's why I, that's why I picked a, a news reporter instead of somebody who was like from a yeah. Catholic newspaper. Right. Like, Every every at every step of the way, you expect there not to be any info on this. And I'm I'm being pointed to documents. The only hole in this for me, and I'm obviously saying this with a grain of salt, because like who the fuck knows? Right. But like the only thing that I'm not a hundo on is the stuff the first time in Portugal, uh, with the two professors in the Navy and the Air Force, just because I'm just taking the word for the peop- from the people who translated those documents that what they're saying is what they're translating. But I have no reason to believe that they wouldn't. And I just and I'm w- I'm very willing to like subject all that I have all the links that I used. So I'm gonna I'm gonna post. Well, them. Like you said, no matter how we walk away from this, we still walk away with something weird happened. No something doubt. Something bizarre. No doubt. Happened. And I I I often think about those things from antiquity, like. What the fuck happened then? It sounds so similar to what happened with Fatima. And obviously, I that's not antiquity, but it still was over 100 years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I don't know. Like, there's there's a lot of questions here. I hope this at least captured your imagination, folks. Oh, it definitely and, did. And, I, and I, I, I hope you guys don't read too much into Raelians before... Uh, Bef- I know a little bit about them, but I'm not gonna. Don't I, do it. I will, don't. don't I was gonna say, I'll just don't read it, it out for yourself. Next week, it's so. a. It's a trip. I. I also. <laughs> Thank you, I Alex. also think that statistically, there's probably at least one or two of you who listen to this show, who are part of this uh, organization. There are over a hundred thousand members. So damn. You know, if you're a UFO fanatic and you are part of this, you know. Uh, you you have to just look at it from our point of view and and you know welcome this sort of scrutiny. Uh, so. You know, next week, get ready to learn some more about this crazy, crazy, crazy series. I'm not even going to talk about their beliefs as if they're crazy. I mean, you can decide what you want about that. But just what they have done in this world as a as as an organization as a is fucking bizarre. So 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 get ready. Sick. I'm excited. We'll be back next week with part two of this weird little alien jizz journey that leads into a potential call. Oh, I think I'm I just I think I leads. just realized the name of this episode. 
<laughs> the alien jizz journey, baby. We're on, hey, we're on it right now. Right. That's gonna get gonna everyone to click. That's 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 a click. That's a clickbait episode that is, right it's there. Clickbait right there. It's clickbait. <laughs> we will, we're off to record a mini sode. So if you're a part of the Patreon or want to be part of the Patreon, head on over there. Fifteen dollar tier gets you a mini sode, and you get every single mini sode that's been released since we started them. There's like thirty. We're on thirty six now. There's a bunch. So uh, we're gonna go do that. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we will see you all next week. Peace. Bye. Bye. Anyway, me and my wife were sitting outside indulging on our porch one night, enjoying ourselves. I needed to go to the bathroom, so I stepped back inside, and after a few moments, I hear my wife go, Holy shit, get out here! So I quickly dash back outside, and she's looking up at the sky in awe. I look up too, and there's a perfect line of dozen lights traveling across the sky.